I have a unique collection of plants to share with you. These are air plants or Tillandsia species. And these air plants are all epiphytes, which means they live without soil. They get all the nutrients and water that they need from the air. We typically find them growing in the branch structure of a tree where there's a little crook. They'll sit there and collect water and nutrients that way. Now this form of growing as an epiphyte is not restricted to our Tillandsia. There's many common plants that grow this way, um, including orchids. Orchids don't need soil. We typically grow them in a pot full of sphagnum or something of that sort or little rocks, but they don't need soil. They also get their water and nutrients from the air. Another common one has many different types of ferns. This one happens to be a staghorn fern, uh, but a number of ferns grow as epiphytes, as do plants like mosses. Now the Tillandsia are found throughout mainly tropical and subtropical regions throughout South and Central America into Mexico and we even have a few in the United States and these are limited to Florida and Texas. But many of them do live in humid environments although we'll see that some of them are more adaptable to dry climates. Now these Tillandsia belong to the plant family Bromeliad which is also a fairly common plant family to us. Um, one of our favorite fruit crops out here, our pineapple, is a bromeliad. And the lifestyle of being an epiphyte, not all bromeliads have that. Many of them are terrestrial, and they have a different adaptation to survive. They grow their leaves in whorls that form little cups. And if you look inside those cups, you'll see where water collects. And they actually collect their nutrients and their water from those little pools inside the cups. So that's another unique adaptation. Well, let's take a closer look at our Tillandsia, our air plants. You can see we have quite a great diversity. Now at this far end, this row is all the same species, Ionantha, uh, but there's several different cultivars or varieties here. And the Tillandsia Ionantha is the species that we see most frequently in gift shops, for example. Um, they're kind of the most common uh, species sold. But if you look closely, you can see there's several different cultivars, and these have a little bit different form. Um, Scoposa grows like the scape of a garlic, and it has this more compact form that comes up and curves. The rubra is a bit smaller species. The leaves are a little bit stiffer and shorter. And you can see, as you look, some are a bit greener, and others have more of a silvery coloration to them. Uh, this one, Fire of Tingo, is getting ready to flower. And Tillandsia, they flower only one time during their life cycle. And they typically have a red or purple flower and it'll come out pretty long on this long stalk. And they might bloom for just a few days or up to several weeks or even months. Um, and they'll also often, the tips of the plants will turn orange or red. And so these colors are to attract pollinators, uh, such as hummingbirds and butterflies. Now as we look at the next group, um, I group these by color. There's a lot of variation that we find in the plants. And here we can see that some of them have a very silvery color to them. Now all of the Tillandsia have trichomes that cover their leaves. And you can see here these silvery sort of scale-like pieces on there. Those are the trichomes. And what those do is actually trap the water for the plant. So when it rains on the plant, the trichomes are open. And once moisture gets in there, the trichomes close and they trap water in, um, which the plant will absorb and get its nutrients from. And so some plants have a lot that have a lot of trichomes have more of a silvery sheen. This one is Xerographica, and it is the largest of the air plants. It can grow up to about nine inches in diameter. I have a couple more. Uh, silvers as I like to call them. This one's Funkiana and this one's interesting because the leaves grow kind of close together and they stack up one upon another to create kind of a stem that twists and turns. Now many of these also have a woody base and that's where some of the older leaves had fallen off and you can see some structures that are rather root-like that helps them attach to the tree or branch wherever they happen to be living. One more silver we have is Argentea fuchsia. And I think this one really shows just how diverse they can be. This one's really, really delicate if we contrast that back to the Xerographia. It has uh, such nice, narrow, fine leaves. 
For a more stout or robust appearance, we have Tillandsia juncia, and this one's also very upright. Another large species that can grow about 12 to 18 inches in length um, and has very stiff sort of broom-like uh, structure to the plant. I like how they curve in at the tip, almost like a light bulb shape. Another very uh, stiff and hardy one is Tillandsia pruinosa. Again, real stiff leaves. And one of the things I'd like to point out is that these with the stiffer leaves tend to dry out less quickly and they're a little bit more adaptable to our hot climates. These, uh, this is the tricolor, melancanter tricolor. And this one I think is unique for its coloration. It has a lot of purple and burgundy colors in there along with the green. And then the scales give it the uh, third color giving its name tricolor. Um, again, this one's pretty stiff and upright. Um, the twisting and curving of the leaves give them quite a bit of character. This is Caput Medusa, uh, named after the mythological creature with snakes in her hair, and I think it's very well named with these twisting and curving leaves. Um, but they just kind of take on a character of their own, very unique. The last two I want to look at have a bulbous base. This is Baileyi, or pseudo Baileyi, and then I have Bootsy. Bootsii and Bailey, I both have this bulb base, and that'll become important when we talk about how to care for our plants, because when they have a bulb, their uh, maintenance is a little bit different. But again, these have some really nice stiff leaves that hold uh, beautiful form, and the Bootsii is again unique for its coloration. If you look close, you can see that there's little spots along the bottom, giving it uh, its own unique character. We've all really enjoyed uh, working with these plants here at the garden. They have such unique uh, character and individuality. And they really lend themselves to a great variety of uses. In some coming segments, we'll look at a variety of ways that we can use our air plants, and we'll also discuss the special maintenance of the Tillandsia.